So back in 2010, um, I, this time, like it was about the beginning of June, I believe, 2010, maybe the end of May, I woke up one morning and I couldn't turn my head. And I went to the chiropractor and I had an adjustment and it did not get better. In fact, it got much worse. So they sent me in for an MRI and I was not expecting anything, you know, but because it wasn't getting better, he wanted to make sure. And I was thinking muscles. Well, what the MRI revealed was that I had an osteophyte, a bone osteophyte or a bone spur that was poking in between my vertebrae into my spinal cord. Now I had suffered from heat stroke and migraines um, for the years leading up to this. And what they had said was that this bone spur had developed from many accidents and I had fallen off horses when I was training horses and jumping horses quite a bit in my younger years and it caught up with me. So I woke up one morning and, you know, imagine that your spinal cord sort of runs in there. The osteophyte was literally pushing in so far that I barely had any blood flow to the brain. And three of my discs were herniated. So I could barely turn my head. I was in a lot of pain. Um, while the radiologist that took the MRI said he couldn't tell me what exactly was wrong at that point. He just said, you need to go get a collar, a soft collar from um, whatever, like Walgreens or and wear it until you hear from your doctor. And I was terrified at that point because he was like, don't cough. <laughs> I'm like, okay, don't fall. Great. And at that point, I'd been losing feeling in my hands, my legs, and was barely able to sit up. And I was like, my legs were just collapsing. So when I got the results back, it was urgent that I go in for surgery and have the bone spur taken out so that the spinal column, you know, the spinal cord could, could be restored um, and the blood flow back to my brain and that my nerves that were impinged were free and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I didn't have insurance, <laughs> right? So I've been self-employed since, oh God, the late nineties and I just did not have insurance. And so I started to call around to different spine doctors and neurosurgeons and none of them could give me a price. I'm like, how much is this going to cost? And I was pretty sure I was going to have to have spinal fusion because there were three discs. It was C, is it C three, four, four, five, five, six. Um, had had all blown out at the same time, herniated all three discs at the same time. And, and I prayed because <laughs> they're like not giving me a price. They could not tell me, right, what it was going to cost me to repair this. And I obviously needed my neck. Also, because my spinal cord was impinged, they said, if that thing goes, that spur goes farther into my spinal cord, I could be paralyzed from the neck down and be very careful. So I prayed and I was, I was shocked, but more so I was determined at that point. This was eight years ago, May, June of 2010. I was determined not to let this take me out. So I prayed. I went into meditation and spirit said, go on, go online and look up herniated discs. So I did. Next thing you know, they're leading me through these different clicks. Like spirit literally is I don't even remember how it happened. And this has happened so many times to me. I don't remember how it happened, but I ended up clicking on something for medical tourism, which I had never heard before, that you could go out of the country for a medical issue and have it resolved, right? So I found three different hospitals in three different countries that were doing um, disc replacement surgery, which I had never heard of either. I thought you could only have fusion. Well, India, Germany, and um, one other country, I can't even remember now, were doing disc replacement surgery and they had been doing it for a number of years. In fact, the one in India was like, and Germany, they were like, yeah, 10 years. And the US, it wasn't even here yet. So there are a series of very strange coincidences and synchronicities. I found a doctor that was at a teaching hospital in India, in Bangalore, India, that had um, used to train and teach at Harvard. So I got him on the phone, arranged to have him review my MRI. Um, you know, thankfully for the internet, technology is beautiful. They reviewed it and he said, yeah, you've got to have all three replaced. We've only ever done two. You will be the first three that we do, but I think we can do it. 
And next thing you know, this whirlwind of stuff happens and where the U.S. was like, it's going to cost anywhere between 200000 and God only knows because we can't give you a price. India is like 18000 a month stay in the hospital. I'm like, okay, how soon can you do it? And I didn't have a passport and I had to come up with the cash. All these things had to happen. It didn't stop me, though. I didn't break down and go, oh, I can't. So this is why I'm sharing this with you. My initial reaction was, I don't have the money and I don't have a passport and I've never been to India. What do I do? It wasn't that. My initial reaction was spirits leading me through this. There is a reason this is coming to me. I will figure this out and it will all be provided for it. And guess what? It was through whatever series of events and and, um, synchronicities I was provided for and went there, had the surgery, you know, immediately from the hospital and As you can see, I mean, I still have the scar. They cut into the front of my neck and they pull your your voice box, your uh, vocal cords over and all of your um, veins. And that was one of the things they told me, you know, you could, you could not come out of the surgery. You could lose your voice, your voice, which that's how I make my money, right? Like that's my business. I speak, I talk, I advise. Um, So it's very scary for me, but what was more scary is not being able to walk, not being able to feed myself, not being able to do anything or have a quality of life. So it was well worth the risk. And because I I, um, support my family, you know, very important that I'm able to take care of things. And um, I was very blessed that my dad helped me out with that surgery and saved my, saved my life in more ways than one with that one. So I flew to India and it was a 20 something hour flight had the surgery they said it took i think i was in there for maybe four or five hours longer than they than is normal they went through three drill bits diamond blade drill bits to clear out my um my vertebrae to get the discs in because my vertebrae are so small um they had to make room and they hammered it in there but i woke up i went through the surgery there was no pain meds other than what is equivalent to a tylenol when i woke up in icu and they said you need to walk india does not believe in in pain relief like they think it impedes healing and they're probably right within 24 hours i was up and walking and i was out of the hospital um seven days early and i prayed and i believed so why am i sharing this with you many of you are facing you know what you think are catastrophic circumstances all right whether it's the loss of a relationship the loss of a job you've got a health issue that needs addressing many of you are facing things that are surprising shocking to the system and a little scary you know you may have a financial thing that needs to be addressed right and you don't know how it's going to happen. And I want to tell you, it's no joke when I teach this stuff. Like, I don't teach anything that I haven't already proven in my own life, because I'm a skeptic. <laughs> proven in my own life is not only possible, but it happens. It's proven, period, right? So whether you talk about this next surgery in India, or you talk about healing cancer naturally, or you talk about giving birth at 35 at home, or manifesting a boat and a pile of cash, you know, or a move or whatever. Like I have been able to create whatever I wanted to in any, you know, real circumstance that was important and needed in my life because of my faith, because I know that all things are possible when you believe, but you have to get away from that negative self-talk. What I didn't do, like I said, through that circumstance and many others, was to go into a place of fear and doubt. I did not do that, right? I didn't do that when I had cancer. I've stood up against the doctors when they wanted to to tell me what I need to do. I don't listen. Like Western medicine is great for diagnosis. I'm not putting Western medicine down at all. In fact, Western medicine is what told me what was wrong with my neck, right? Allopathic medicine healed my neck. Having that surgery healed my neck. But when it came to the cancer, natural medicine is what I use to take care of cancer, leukemia and colon cancer. I know these things are possible when I'm led. In order to be led, and this is where most of you guys get hung up. I'm a strong lady. You know, that's a misconception. You can say that I'm strong. I'm no different than you or my next door neighbor. My difference is that I have done my inner work. I have cleared my my negative self-talk. I have nurtured and healed all of my inner child woundings and I continue to grow and I continue to push and I continue to evolve. 
That is the only difference. It's not a matter of strength. It really isn't. It's a matter of where do I put my faith? Do I put it in man? Do I put it in my own, you know, human abilities? No, I connect to the source of all that is. I plug in there. I ask for guidance. One of the things, and this is why I'm sharing this with you, one of the things that I want you all to be very clear on that interferes with your connection to your own intuition. And when I say intuition, I don't mean some woo-woo thing. You know, yes, I was naturally gifted when I was born with strong spiritual gifts. However, those gifts are useless to me if I don't develop them and use them. And they can be shut down by the voice of the inner critic or my ego. They can be shut down by pride and arrogance. Oh, I'm so much better than everybody else. I'm very humble and I will remain that way because much is required on this path of helping other people, right? Like I've got a voice that many people heed what I say. I have to remain very humble. And I don't want to tell you guys like, you know, I know everything. I certainly do not. Yeah. <laughs> like I want to be able to give you though, the, the things that I've learned and use them for a platform of growth for yourself and encouragement for you. So one of the things I had to do, like I said, is get rid of that negative self-talk. When you have the ego going off in your analytical mind, that mind chatter, that circles, it talks you out of the very things that you need to do, you want to do, and it shuts off your intuition. It shuts off the voice of spirit. You cannot be guided when your head is so busy coming up with rebuttals and what ifs and oh my God, so much fear. You cannot get the intuitive hits and be guided if you're allowing your head to just go off. That's why it's super important that you do the work to calm the mind chatter, to disconnect from the emotional energy and all of the self-talk that comes along with your past. You have to heal that when you do, and it's not easy work, I get it, you know, but it's necessary work if you wanna evolve. People will say the same thing about you once you've gone through the work, oh, you're super strong, and you will know it's not a matter of strength. It's a matter that you cleared the things away that were blocking you in your, in your path to be able to be directed to the solutions to the problems that you currently have, right? And truly, miracles are real. So I asked some questions in, on the description of this live stream. Are miracles real? What are miracles? Miracles are deliverance of you from your problems in a way that you didn't previously even know was possible. Or last minute, 11th hour, something comes in and takes care of something for you when all else looked like by third dimensional reality, it wasn't going to happen. I can't tell you how many times that has happened, <laughs> whether it's finding out about surgery in India and the money coming together and the surgeon being perfect <laughs> and everything working out. I can't tell you how many times that has happened to me. Are they really miracles? They are because they are not part of the normal sort of experience. It's not by our own sort of, um, understanding or knowledge, right? I had no knowledge that medical tourism was a thing until I needed it. I had no knowledge that there was other surgeries and other um, solutions to my neck problem at that time until I needed it. And boy, isn't it interesting? Spirit led me right to it. So I really want you guys to get this. Like if you want to be able to live in a life that is full of miracles on a daily basis, that is constantly guiding you, that you're connected to. Like we are meant to have a relationship with spirit, source energy, God, universe. You call it what you want, doesn't matter what you call it. You know, the Tao Te Ching calls it um, the mother of 10,000 things, right? That's what the Tao Te Ching calls it or the name that cannot be named. The minute you give it a name, it loses all of its meaning. So I don't care what you call it. I really think that God doesn't care what you call it. <laughs> as long as you understand the power and supreme being and energy that it is, which is the force and creation of our uh, energy of creation of all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when you connect to that energy, when you connect to that divine life force that is in all things, you can be guided. But what disconnects you is that voice in your head. What disconnects you is your history. What disconnects you is the lower range of emotions that you get stuck in, whether it's grief or sadness or um, apathy or, you know, 
self-doubt, all those things is what breaks that connection. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I never have those things happen where my, you know, my inner critic wants to come up and say, oh, Bernadette, you can't do that. You shouldn't think that, whatever, 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 right? It happens, but I can flip it. That's the difference because I've done the work, because I've reprogrammed my mind, because I have freed myself and nurtured and healed my wounded inner child. I can easily recognize that voice and know that it's not the voice of spirit. Flip it, go back to reconnecting with spirit and get the information that I need to be directed to take the action, divinely inspired action to get exactly what I want in life. Do I believe in acupuncture? Absolutely. I think acupuncture is wonderful. I love alternative medicine, period. That's my thing. <laughs> like, I believe that we have a bunch of natural remedies, right? I also believe that medicine is there for a reason, just like I believe religion is there for a reason. Many people need the rules and the structure that religion provides. I don't believe that there's one religion that is absolutely right. I don't believe in the dogma of religion. So let's just clear all of that up. But what I do believe in is if you really believe that there is one loving energy that connects us all and we all came from that energy, then now you're walking in the right place. Love one another as I have loved you is what Jesus the master taught. And if you can do that in all circumstances, you will always be connected to source energy and be led. I want all of you to really get your intuition plugged in so that you can tap into the source of all knowledge and wisdom that is out there and available to you. All you need to do is some of your inner work. You know, I can help you develop all of the other stuff, you know, and, and make it so that your gifts are more heightened. So interesting. I met with this really cool um, new friend of mine last night and she's an empath. And we were talking about the empath stuff because I have, <laughs> there's this misconception in the world of the empaths um, that you can't control your empathic abilities. And typically, you know, people that are empathic get ripped around by every emotion that's out there, right? You can control it. You have to do the work necessary to unplug from everybody else's energy, be able to control and shield yourself and know what's yours and what's not. And the only way to get there is to work on the self and know who you are. Who are you? What does your energy feel like? And then when energies from the outside come in, you can quickly recognize them, push them out, and you're no longer affected by them and you need to rise above them. So those things are all possible for all of you. It just takes a little bit of work on yourself and then you can overcome anything. So if you want, really want to work on those things, whether you want to do it one-on-one -on -one with me, or you want to do it in a group, I would say, you know, go to my website, Bernadette Gold, look at the different ways you can work with me and jump in and let's start getting this done. Soul Fast 30 is getting ready to start again on July 1st, but ongoing, right? Like if you were to join Soul Fast 30 today, which is the 30 day program where you get a video an exercise and a mantra for the day, every day for 30 days. Um, if you were to jump in right now, you just start where we're at and then it repeats on the first and you get to repeat it as many times as you want. It's yours. We do it in a Facebook group. It's also housed on my website and you'll see that it's good little exercises for you and teachings for you to really understand where the ego, the in, inner critic is coming in and snagging you and separating you from your intuition, from your divine source and from others. But you really want to just get in alignment and the miracles can absolutely flow to you all the dang time, all the time. You become like a magical person where people are like, how come everything always works out for you? And it's because you actually believe it both on a conscious level and a subconscious level. And that's the important part, handling the subconscious and you feel it when all of those things are in line, right? Conscious, unconscious and your emotions are all in alignment. Now you are set up to allow the flow to and through you of all the things that you want and need for your life. And it is not about strength. It really isn't. It's always about where you aligned. Seriously. You can switch it off, Cindy. You definitely can switch it off. And it is just that place. And you're in soul fast. So you're doing the beginning work of all of that, really clarifying, yeah, where that voice is snagging you. And the more you get there, the easier it's going to be. We talk a lot more about like the empath control 
in charm life, the more you raise your vibration, the more you hold a higher level emotional vibration and you know where you're plugging in, you certainly are going to rise above the effects of the ego. Ask the other people in charm life. Um, and you can either ask on my page or in burning gold or, um, in the soul fast group, since you're a part of that, ask them, you know, have you noticed that your empath, <laughs> your empathic feelings are less affected now that you've done the work, you know, and you've continued the work and, I guarantee you they'll all tell you, yes, absolutely. It made a huge difference. And it is that work, you know? Yes, there is help and help for the empath. You just have to get your energy raised above and your understanding raised above. And then intentional living is what it takes from there on out. So if you want help with any of those things, you know, I always tell everyone, jump into Charm Life. That's the complete one. You get Soul Fast for free. But if you just want to start, you know, start at the beginning, find Join Soul Fast. Um, and then also you could do a one-on-one -on -one with me. And I do have availability for that too. So I love you guys. I really want to help you. It is time. You need your intuition intact. Things are changing very rapidly on this planet and not all of it looks good, but if you can get beyond the surface appearance of things, you're going to be able to ride through these very unsightly um, appearances that are happening on the planet, rise above it and actually be a light, like a lighthouse for others that light leads them into more light, more stability, right? I love you guys. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you later.